Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, NVIDIA are announcing three new graphics cards as part of their GeForce RTX 40 series. The RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, and the RTX 4060, the non-TI model. We have specifications, pricing, and release date information for these three cards, plus some first-party performance estimates to get through, all wrapped up in our usual analysis. So let's talk about new GPUs, but before we do. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Skytech Gaming, a provider of pre-built gaming PCs in California. They offer lifetime technical support backed by well-trained customer support, and all their systems feature a one-year parts warranty. One of their newest pre-builds is the Azure 2, which Skytech Gaming sent over for us to check out. This is a well put together PC that looks great, the BIOS has been tuned for optimal cooling and noise performance, and the cable management is extremely neat. It features the new GeForce RTX 4070 along with the Core i5-13600K, and this allows it to deliver impressive mid-range performance, while supporting all the latest and greatest features such as DLSS 3 frame generation, ray tracing, and AV1 encoding. So to get the right PC built for you, check out the link in the video description. First, the information that most people will be interested in, when you can buy these cards and how much they will cost. Coming first, on May 24th, is the RTX 4060 Ti with 8GB of VRAM. In just under a week, you'll be able to buy one for $400 US, well, $399 to be precise, which is the same price as the RTX 3060 Ti it's replacing. This makes the 4060 Ti the first card that, tier for tier, is not increasing the price versus the previous generation model. Coming later in July is a higher capacity variant of the RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM priced at $500 US. This is a hefty premium to pay for an extra 8 gigabytes of VRAM, especially as Nvidia told us this product is otherwise the same GPU die configuration as the 8 gig model. In the past, Nvidia has tinkered with the core count and other hardware when producing two models of differing memory capacities, typically giving the higher VRAM model more shader cores. But this isn't the case here. This is simply a $500 RTX 4060 Ti with double the VRAM. Also coming in July is the RTX 4060, the non-TI model. This card will be priced at $300 US, not shown on the slide here, but that's what Nvidia told us. Quite a surprising price if I'm honest, given that the RTX 3060 was priced at $330 US. However, the 4060 does feature less VRAM at just 8GB compared to 12GB on the previous gen model, so I'm sure that has played into the pricing decision here. For specifications, NVIDIA are yet to release the full table of core configurations and so on, but we do have some information to go on. The RTX 4060 Ti uses the Ada Lovelace architecture and is built on TSMC's 4N node. We're expecting this to be an AD106 die, a downgrade from the GA104 die used in the RTX 3060 Ti in terms of size and class, but this you know, it hasn't been confirmed by NVIDIA yet. What we do know is there's 22 teraflops of shader performance, 51 teraflops of RT performance, and 353 teraflops of tensor performance. This implies a core configuration with 34 SMs and 4,352 shader units at similar clocks to other RTX 40 series GPUs. The memory bus has been reduced substantially compared to the RTX 3060 Ti, dropping from 256-bit to 128-bit, although GDDR6 speeds have been increased from 14 to 18 gigabits per second, which leads to 288 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Given this stark decrease in memory capabilities, NVIDIA are now including this 554 gigabytes per second effective memory bandwidth figure, which also factors in L2 cache performance, which is much larger at 32 meg on this GPU. Whether or not this small L2 cache can compensate for much lower GDDR6 memory bandwidth for games remains to be seen, certainly something to test versus the RTX 3060 Ti. As this card uses a new architecture on a new node, it does feature reduced power consumption, dropping the TGP from 200 watts down to 160 watts, and Nvidia expects an even larger discrepancy in average gaming power. There's also new features supported here thanks to the architecture upgrade such as AV1 encoding capabilities and DLSS3 frame generation. With these specifications, the RTX 4060 Ti will end up around 75% that of the RTX 4070 in terms of core configuration, but with only 57% of the memory performance and 66% the amount of VRAM. 
This is a much larger cut down compared to the RTX 3060 Ti versus RTX 3070, as both of these RTX 30 series GPUs used the same die and had the same memory capabilities, while the 3060 Ti had 83% the number of SMs. What this means is we can expect a larger gap between the 4060 Ti and 4070 than we saw between the 3060 Ti and 3070. The RTX 4060 is cut down further again. This is still an Ada Lovelace product built on TSMC 4N, but we're expecting the use of the AD107 die here. 15 teraflops of shader performance, again at an expected similar clocks to other RTX 40 series GPUs, implies 24 SMs and 3072 shader units, just 71% of what buyers are getting from the RTX 4060 Ti. However, the memory subsystem is less affected with 8GB of GDDR6 on a 128-bit bus delivering 272GB per second of bandwidth, so we're looking at 17 gigabits per second memory. This is still a downgrade on the RTX 3060 though, which not only offered more memory bandwidth due to its 192-bit bus, but also a higher capacity in the more widely available 12GB configuration. What's perhaps the most impressive here though is a TGP of just 115 watts, so this should be a very efficient GPU with the possibility of small compact designs. This isn't a huge surprise given the expected use of AD107, with the 107 die previously being used for products like the RTX 3050 in some cases, that also had low power consumption. The use of a new architecture also provides the same benefits, features like AV1 encoding and DLSS3 frame generation. With the main details of these products out of the way, there is a clear elephant in the room here, which is the low memory capacity of these GPUs. Well, two of these GPUs at least. The RTX 4060 Ti with just 8GB of VRAM priced at a whopping $400 US does seem quite problematic given the increasing number of games that struggle to run using ultra settings on 8GB cards. As we've shown across many examples now, this is a clear trend for modern games, which may relegate the RTX 4060 Ti to only being usable on medium-ish quality settings depending on the title. Now, NVIDIA said in their briefing with us that the 4060 Ti isn't designed to be used on ultra settings. Being a mid-range card, it's more of a highish setting product at 1080p. And it is true that many games will run fine on an 8GB card in the short term with dialed down texture quality, but the issue here is that VRAM capacity will likely be the only reason that full ultra setting gaming will be unachievable, especially with ray tracing enabled, as otherwise, the core GPU performance of this product will be capable of ultra settings. I mean, this is effectively an RTX 3070 in terms of performance, and we already know from our previous investigations that an RTX 3070 is quite capable of ultra settings gameplay when given enough VRAM. We strongly suspect the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti will be heavily compromised in a similar way to the 3070 is now. I think this will be made very clear when the 16GB model becomes available in July. While it does cost an exorbitant $100 more to get double the VRAM, this card will almost certainly not have the same limitations as the 8GB model, and many games that aren't playable on ultra settings on the 8GB card will be very playable on the 16 gig card despite otherwise identical GPU core hardware. This puts Nvidia in a difficult position where they're trying to say the 4060 Ti 8GB will not have any limitations for gamers using realistic settings, while also claiming the 16 gig model does give gamers an advantage that's worth paying an extra $100 for, and I really don't think you can have it both ways here. At the end of the day, it's going to be difficult to recommend gamers spend $400 US on a card with just 8GB of VRAM, given the trends we are seeing in modern games. On this hardware spec alone, the card feels a bit dead on arrival. Maybe Nvidia will be able to pull off a miracle and make this the best ever 8GB GPU, we'll have to wait and see in our testing, but our initial impressions are really that the RTX 4060 Ti should only have one model, that model being the 16GB model priced at $400. The RTX 4060 is also in a spot of bother when it comes to VRAM capacity, although to a lesser degree than the 4060 Ti due to its lower price tag and lesser performance. Still, at $300 it could be hard to recommend a product that may have obvious limitations on launch day due to insufficient VRAM, especially in comparison to its predecessor, the RTX 3060, which launched with 12GB of VRAM.
In the most VRAM demanding games using ultra settings, like The Last of Us Part 1 for example, the RTX 3060 may end up outperforming the newer 4060 due to its larger VRAM buffer. For a card like the RTX 4060, it will really depend on its overall performance though. If the GPU otherwise couldn't play the latest titles using ultra settings at playable frame rates, it's less important if that GPU also can't use ultra textures due to VRAM limitations. But if it ends up being the case where VRAM is the only limitation to ultra quality style gaming, it too will be difficult to recommend and really we think that 8GB of VRAM is not sufficient for a $300 product in 2023. Nvidia's performance claims for these products are a mixed bag as well. Let's look at what they're saying for the RTX 4060 Ti, the 8GB model. Compared to the RTX 3060 Ti, NVIDIA are claiming a 15% performance uplift in titles without frame generation, which gives us an idea of the raw performance difference between these models. This is expanded upon in this slide, where you can see a variety of examples both using and not using DLSS 3. A 15% performance improvement at 1080p at the same price compared to the previous generation it's not a particularly impressive gain. It seems clear that Nvidia will be using DLSS 3 as the key selling point here, which is not accessible on Ampere GPUs. Nvidia are claiming a 60% performance uplift over the RTX 2060 Super, which is probably enough to begin enticing Turing users to upgrade, but it's questionable whether anyone still waiting to upgrade would change their mind based on only a 15% uplift in performance over a card already on the market at the same price. I say that because RTX 2060 Super owners have had ample opportunities to buy an RTX 3060 Ti for around $400 over the last few months. If they wanted that level of performance, they would have bought that card already. Is a card 15% better going to sway opinion and entice those people to upgrade? It's questionable whether that's enough of an uplift. On the other hand, the 4060 Ti should deliver around the performance of the RTX 3070 at a $100 discount compared to the previous generation, at least looking at the 8GB model. Our testing puts the 3070 roughly 15% ahead of the 3060 Ti, which is the same margin Nvidia are touting here. That's certainly a more positive way of looking at things, but with the VRAM limitations of the RTX 3070, a $100 discount three years later may not be enough. It also puts the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig model in a difficult position. As it's the same core configuration as the 8 gig card, this means the 4060 Ti 16 gig should end up with roughly the same performance as the RTX 3070 at the same price, with the benefit being fewer limitations in VRAM heavy games due to its higher VRAM capacity. That's a nice bonus to have, but again it's questionable whether that sort of upgrade is enough to entice buyers without a price cut. This is why the 16 gig model being priced at $400 would feel more suitable to us, at least based on Nvidia's announcement date information. This is further compounded by the AMD Radeon RX 6800 often being priced around $500 US these days. That card also has 16 gig of VRAM and will likely be quite a bit faster. I also found it curious how Nvidia talked about performance with the 16 gig card. We did get this slide, which actually shows lower performance for two games compared to the 8GB model slide. This is because for A Plague Tale Requiem and the Resident Evil 4 Remake, Nvidia tested those games using the high preset and ray tracing preset respectively on the 8GB card, but bumped both games up to max settings when testing on the 16GB model. This reduces the length of the bars for the 16GB model in those games, but does show playable performance on the higher capacity variant. I would assume these games at max settings do not deliver acceptable performance on the 8GB card due to VRAM issues, and Nvidia chose not to show that for obvious reasons for that 8GB card. And by testing all of these GPUs at 1080p and with DLSS enabled, they are already removing many VRAM limitations, which are typically more problematic at 1440p. I don't really think the target market for a $400 or $500 GPU is 1080p gamers, 1440p would make a lot more sense here given the price tier. The RTX 4060's performance is listed by Nvidia as being 20% higher than the RTX 3060 and 60% higher than the RTX 2060 at a lower $300 price point. This is certainly a much more acceptable performance uplift as the RTX 4060 is not only delivering a higher margin over its predecessor than the 4060 Ti, but is doing so at a lower price, albeit with less VRAM.
Based on our numbers, the RTX 4060 would therefore deliver performance that falls somewhat short of the RTX 3060 Ti, again at a $100 lower price. Aside from the VRAM issues, what NVIDIA are facing in the lower parts of the market is strong competition from AMD. The RTX 3060 at $330 wasn't a hugely attractive price point when AMD were offering faster models like the RX 6600 XT for below $330 for much of that card's life. Yeah, the 6600 XT had a terrible launch MSRP of $380 US, but for the last 9 months it has been priced below $300. Currently, this level of performance is available for around $260, which would equate to the RTX 4060 offering roughly 15-20% to more performance at a 15% higher price, if NVIDIA's numbers are accurate relative to our previous testing. That's a much less exciting uplift, and it would require NVIDIA's feature set to get it over the line, things like DLSS, AV1, encoding, and of course, judging by the TGP of this card, superior efficiency. These are of course just first party numbers as well, with many of the games listed being tested with DLSS3 frame generation enabled, and we don't believe frame rates between DLSS3 on configurations and DLSS3 off configurations can be fairly tested in this manner. There's still a lot to play out here to see where actual performance lies, especially for games that may run into VRAM limitations, and also titles that are heavy on memory bandwidth given the reductions here compared to the Ampere generation. All up, the reveal of Nvidia's mid-range mainstream RTX 4060 series has been a bit of a mixed bag. On face value, it's good to see Nvidia launching products that don't have ludicrously increased prices at the same product tier, but upon a deeper investigation it appears that many of these products are compromised and may not provide excellent value to consumers. The big issues here are around VRAM capacity and performance uplift compared to the previous gen. In our opinion, $400 US is far too much to pay for an 8GB GPU in 2023, and even at $300 it's a difficult proposition, especially as the previous RTX 3060 actually has more VRAM. Nvidia's solution to this is getting you to spend $100 more for 16GB of VRAM in the 4060 Ti, which also feels like too much of a premium given the performance of the product. And speaking of performance, these cards appear to only have modest performance uplifts appear to Ampere. Nvidia's first party performance figures certainly don't show a mind blowing performance gain outside of frame generation comparisons. It'll be really interesting to see where these cards end up after we test them because there's not much here pointing to a must buy release. At the very least, Nvidia have failed to convince us. And given gamers right now aren't exactly flocking out to buy GPUs, anything short of a must buy could be in a bit of trouble. It's actually been a bit surprising to us how low demand has been, I mean we didn't think the RTX 4070 was that bad, probably we had one of the more positive reviews, but it seems GPU buyers had a different opinion, so certainly an interesting time for the GPU market coming up. Anyway that's it for this one and this news video, we will have a full performance review of the RTX 4060 Ti coming up around the launch of that product, it's available on May 24th, so of course you can expect our reviews around that time. The other two models, the 3060, sorry, 4060 Ti, 16 gig, and the 4060 coming in July, we don't have firm release dates on that one just yet, so you'll have to wait a bit to see our performance thoughts on that one. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you're interested in these sorts of videos and like the content that we make, please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplane. Links are in the description below and you'll gain access to some cool benefits and perks, things like our behind the scenes videos, our monthly live stream which is coming up that we'll be talking about all sorts of cool and fun interesting topics and of course our discord community as well so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one